found guilty of the serious offence of robbing a man at a cash machine and using unnecessary violence. The offence is made worse by the fact that you were on a day's compassionate leave from Shadwell Prison to see your son's headmaster. You betrayed the prison's trust. I sentence you to three years' imprisonment to run consecutively from the end of your current sentence. Three more years? Sammy. I'm so sorry, love. Sammy! Oh, right, huh? OK. Yeah, so you'll ring in and tell them the sentence, will you? OK, cheers. I see Mrs Cook didn't hang around to offer her commiserations. You blame her. No, the guy's an idiot. He blew his chances of parole when he did this. He could have been out by now. Three more years. Trench will hang around. Well, I wouldn't. Not with those legs. Detective Inspector Deacon. Yeah. Just been given a message from a holding cell. It's one of the prisoners, Robert Cook. He wants to see you. He says it's important. OK. Thank you for coming, Mr Deacon. I really appreciate it. What do you want, Bob? I, I, know, I know there's no excuses. I got what I deserved. And I'm not proud of what I did. I let people down. Did you see Sam? Yeah. She won't even look at me. Why, are you surprised? No. I never meant to go for that bloke. All I could think of was the money. I owed someone inside. He was getting nasty. Yeah, yeah, we've heard all this before. <sighs> yeah, yeah, all right. The thing is, I wasn't thinking about Sammy either. She's been through hell these last three years. All this time, I'm trying to tell her she's not married to a criminal. Not really. Oh. Get to the point. I want to do something about it. Go on. You know I kept stumped, didn't you? About them burglaries. Yeah. You didn't want to grass up the rest of the game. Sammy thought I was mad. Taking the blame like that, she said I owed her nothing. I managed to persuade her it was for the best. She promised to wait. Now I'm frightened I'll lose her. I need to show her I can change. Put it all behind me. I want to... Are you saying that you're going to give us the information we need on those other burglaries? Yeah. Everything you know? Yeah. Right. Well, we'll need a statement. But, first, I want to see Sammy. What do you mean? I want to tell her what I'm doing. Is that a condition? Yeah. She's already walked out on you, Bob. Don't you think she's had enough? Maybe she has. But I'm not telling you nothing till I've seen her. So Cook's decided to talk? If we save his marriage. What? He wants to speak to his wife. She left straight after the sentence. She can't have been very pleased then. Mm. God knows what chance we've got of getting her to speak to him. What do you got? Right, all five burglaries were high profile. Same MO, gang with a lorry. The houses were practically stripped. There was some nice stuff taken. The jewellery was very tasty. Distinctive too. You would have had to break it up or ship it out. It was offered Cook to be involved. He had no previous. He had a business, didn't he? That's right. He got into debt. Uh, he broke his ankle during the last burglary. I found him at the bottom of the stairs. You got any idea who paid him off? No. Cook may have been a hopeless thief, but he was a silent one. We thought he'd struck a deal. But no proof? Nothing solid. We got nowhere. All right, John. Go and see Mrs Cook. Tell her about her husband. Just don't waste too much time on him. OK. You ready to be charming, Tosh? Mm. Hello there. Washing machine. Excuse me? Have you brought it? The new one? No, I'm Detective Sergeant Bolton. This is Detective Constable Lyons from Sunhill. Oh. Oh, uh, Sammy was expecting a delivery this morning. She asked me to let them in. Mrs Cook? Uh, yes, that's right. I'm her neighbour, Mrs Edwards. Do you know where she is, Mrs Edwards? No, I'm sorry. I think we need to speak to her. What about? We're making some inquiries. Is it about her husband? Yeah, she told me about the sentence. So you've spoken to her this morning? Yeah, when she came round with the key. I could see it was a weight off her shoulders. She was pleased. Well, she wasted three years on him. Pretty girl like that, full of life. It's not her fault that the marriage is over. Is that what she told you? Well, not just me. She told Bob as well, down the court this morning. Well, Mrs Cook said she was going to divorce her husband. That's right. She told him after the sentence. Well, now she's free, I suppose. Oh, wait a minute. Mrs Edwards, did Mrs Cook say where she was going? No, no. Do you think we could have a quick look inside the house? Oh, I'm not sure. There may well be something in there which could tell us where she's gone. Is this allowed? A few letters. And it is important we talk to Mrs Cook. We'd be very grateful. OK, but be quick. You old devil. Well... Thank you. 
Find anything? No, nothing, Governor. You? Yeah, I found a wardrobe full of designer clothes, which I'm pretty sure Sammy didn't buy, and I found this in the dress book. I see. Looks like the old story, eh? Husband in prison and the wife gets lonely. Along comes Mr. Moneybags and the wife gives hubby his marching orders. Except we know she didn't. She lied about that. It still doesn't look good, Sarge. Do you recognise Loverboy? No. Neither do I. Do you have a receipt for the washing machine, Mrs. Edwards? It would be with the delivery, sir. I think so. Hang on a sec. Can I have a look at it, please? Here we are. Do you know a Mr. G. Barnes? Barnes? He paid for the washing machine. He signed the credit card slip. Is this him? You've been through her things. It was on the bedside table. Can you tell me if this is the man? Yes, that's Jeff Barnes. How long has Mrs. Cook been seeing him? About... Five or six months. Is she with him today? Yeah. He picked her up this morning. He'd take no shopping, I expect. Did she say when she was going to be back? No. Now, I have a feeling that I'm going to regret having told you all this, and I? So I think you'd better go. Any joy? Not yet. She seems to be going out with some guy called Barnes. Jeff Barnes. That's right. Does he ring any bells? Yeah, he's a villain. He was on our shopping list for the burglaries, but we couldn't build a connection. Until now. It's not really a strong one. It's a start. Well, if Barnes was involved, he certainly had the means to pay off Cook and the reputation. Yeah? Yeah, he's got form for blackmail, I mean, not for GBH. He wouldn't want him for an enemy. So if we can get Cook to point the finger, everyone's going to be very happy. Except maybe Mrs. Cook. It's the first lead we've had on these burglaries for ages. It's going to be worth a try. Bolton. He seems pretty convinced he's found a shortcut. Yeah? Yes, Sarge. You don't think so? Marriage, Sarge. Okay, we're on our way down. Tricky business. Right, Tosh. Let's go shopping. What, you found them? I gave uniform descriptions of Barnes and Sammy. They've been spotted at the local shopping centre. Fast work. Gary. Where is he? It's over there. All right, Gary, we'll take over from there. All right, huh? He's given us some money. Right, Tosh, you keep an eye out for Barnes. Yes, Sarge. Mrs. Cook, I'm Detective Sergeant Bolton from Sun Hill. I was in court this morning. I remember. What are you doing here? I need to speak to you about your husband. He was concerned that you left so quickly. He wants to talk to you. He saw the fool he made of himself this morning. I can't take that anymore. So you're not prepared to see him? No. It's going to take you less than half an hour. I think you should. What's this about, Sergeant? I think he feels bad about what he's put you through. Well, that's not why you're here, is it? Because he feels bad? What's going on? I think he wants to talk something over. What? What he plans to do now. I don't want to hear it. There's nothing he can say can make it any better. He says there is. Something that you wanted him to do three years ago when he first got arrested. He's going to tell you about those burglaries, isn't he? Yeah. I don't believe this. He said he wants to wipe the slate clean. He's going to grass up everybody? Yeah, but he wants to see you first. I haven't finished speaking to you. Mrs. Cook! Three years I waited for him. Three years on my own, bringing up a child. And a month before he gets out, he goes and ruins everything. And he just thinks he, he can make it all right like this. Isn't that what you wanted? Yeah, it was. But now... What? Things have changed. What's changed, Mrs. Cook? I just have. I can't see him anymore. We've been to see your neighbour, Mrs. Edwards. You've been to my house? She told us you were going out with Jeff Barnes. Is that true? My private life is none of your business. I hope you're right about that. If you 
husband, excuse me. Mrs Cook, what shall I tell your husband? Look, it's over between me and Bob, all right? It's just over. So tell him what you like. Is she gone out? No, Tosh, you're right. She's sleeping with the enemy. Not that it matters. As soon as Cook finds out, we're going to get all the information we need. Come on, Lydia. We've been round to your house. We spoke to your neighbour, Mrs. Edwards. <laughs> that cow will tell you anything as long as you listen. Barnes has been buying some of your things. New washing machine. New clothes. Why is he interested? It's not out of the goodness of his heart. Maybe you and Barnes go back a bit. Did you do some sort of deal with him? Is that what all this is about? You keep silent for three years if he agrees to look after your wife. I'm sure it started out kosher, but Sammy's an attractive woman and she must have got lonely. And you get into trouble, you steal that money, she's back to square one. I reckon that's when Barnes moved in, don't you? Just get my wife here, Mr. Bolton, you'll get your statement. She's not coming. What? She said sorry, she can't spare the time. She's too busy buying new lingerie. Or rather, she was choosing. Barnes was paying. You see, I asked her about Barnes and she didn't deny it. She said, with you back inside, she's got a future to think of. Look, I know how this works. I'm not an idiot. You'd say anything to get your result, wouldn't you? Anything. It's staring you in the face, Bob. No, Mr. Bolton. You don't know anything about my marriage. Now, I know you want a result and you'll get it. Don't worry. But not until I've spoken to her myself. Okay? How'd it go? It didn't. Sammy Cook is seeing Barnes. So she won't cooperate. <laughs> That's a shame. Because I've been doing some digging around on Barnes and he's shaping up nicely. At the time his business went down, Cook owed money to Barnes' brother, who was one of his suppliers. And the name came up as part of his defence. So there is another connection. It could have been Barnes who got Cook involved in the first place. There's more. Apparently, Barnes has put a lot of money into a restaurant in Fawcett Gardens. He wants to go legitimate. And the money's dirty? That's what the world is. So it could very well be from those burglaries. Sarge? Yeah? None of this stuff has been recovered, has it? None of it, no. Look at the necklace. The earrings. I think we've seen them before. You're right, Tosh, we have. We've seen a picture of Sammy Cook wearing this. We should have taken that photo when we had the chance. Still, that's not a problem, is it? Oh, no. You're joking. Mrs. Edwards will be putty in your hands. Oh, come on, it'd be in everybody's interest. Well, think about it. What's happening? She's thinking about it. Hey, Al. Thanks. You sure this is going to work? Well, it doesn't add up, Tosh. Mrs. Edwards told us that Sammy had asked Cook for a divorce. If everything's as cut and dried as she'd have us believe, why would she lie about that? It's a big step. Exactly. She's not ready to take it yet. Remind me to get you in the next time I have a row with the wife. Oh, here she is. What are you trying to do, phoning me at the restaurant? We can talk in the car. I thought I made it clear I'm not seeing Bob. Have a look at this, Mrs. Cook. This is mine. This was in my house. A neighbour gave it to us to help us with our inquiries. And this is a photograph of some of the jewellery that was stolen three years ago in the burglaries that your husband went down for. They're identical, aren't they? Mrs. Cook? You see, this is now a criminal investigation. This evidence links both you and Barnes to these burglaries. When was the first time you saw this jewellery? Look, he just turned up with them, out of the blue. So you just wore them to please him? Yeah. Did you know it was stolen? No. You sure about that? Look, I don't know where they came from or where they are now, believe me. Well, I'd like to, Mrs Cook, but you've been lying to your husband all this time about your affair, so how do I know that you're not lying to me now? If you help us, we'll know that you've got nothing to hide. Come and see Bob. So it's okay if I lie for you, is it? Pretend nothing's happened between me and Jeff. As far as he's concerned, it hasn't. You told him. We tried to. He threw it back in their faces. 
You won't believe it. Do yourself a favour, Sammy. Get out of this now while you still can. Goodbye, Sergeant. What now, Sarge? I think we're going to have to force the pace a bit. Good afternoon. Police. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Cook. Nice to see you again. Mr. Barnes. Yeah? I'm Detective Sergeant Bolton. This is Detective Constable Lyons from Sunhill. OK, let's own up. Who's double parked outside? <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to ask you some questions in connection with an inquiry we're conducting. OK. I'll drop down a station later on. Actually, we'd like to do it now. Sorry, guys. Anyone for a top-up? It won't take long. I'm busy. Derek! I can make this official if you want. This is a special occasion, Sergeant. Don't spoil it. The car's outside. Excuse me, Jenny. We've been round to Malham Street. Sammy Cook's place. Is that your signature? Yeah. Brand new washing machine. It arrived when we were there. It's a nice gift. OK, I bought it, so what? It's got nothing to do with Cook. Do you recognise this? No. This is a photograph of some jewellery that was stolen on the 12th of April 1993. That's the night that Bob Cook fell down the stairs and was arrested. It's never been recovered. Can you tell me when this was taken? No. Let me remind you. It was just after Bob Cook's arrest on his day release, wasn't it? It's the night your restaurant opened. You brought round Sammy some jewellery to wear. Look at the necklace, Jeff. And the earrings. They're identical. Wouldn't you say? No, I wouldn't. Where did the jewellery come from? I don't know. Didn't you bring it round that evening? I can't remember. We have a witness. I bought it. Shop in High Street. I don't remember which one. OK. That's all for now. We might need to speak to you later. You can get back to your lunch. I expect Sammy's kept them entertained. She must be quite an asset. You two planning to get married? What's it to you? Nothing. I just think that someone should tell Bob Cook, because he still thinks he and Sammy are together. Bye, Mr Barnes. So now Barnes knows we've been sniffing around Sammy? Yeah, now she's a liability. He doesn't know where he stands. How does that help? Cook won't talk until he's seen her. Tosh, if we get this right, we're not even going to need Cook. Any units deal? 25 Malham Street, a disturbance. Sierra Oscar from 358. We're right on top of it. Show us dealing. This is Edwards. Yes, this way. I let myself in as soon as he drove off. Whereabouts? In there. Oh, it was terrible. Some of the things he was shouting at her. Mrs. Cook. Gary. Okay, a Sierra Oscar from 358. Urgent message. Go ahead, Gary. You all right? Ambulance required. One Solo. female with head wound, 25 Mallory Street. An ambulance has been called. Thank you. Hello, Mrs Cook. What are you doing here? We heard you'd been assaulted. We've come to see how you're feeling. Would you like to tell us who was responsible for this? Come off it. You know who did it. You're saying that Jeff Barnes did this? I know what I'm saying. We didn't think you'd react like this. Oh, didn't you? I know exactly what Jeff's like. So do you, Mrs Cook. You know him a lot better than we do. You were going out with him. That was your choice, wasn't it? I know how your nasty little mind works. It's the old story. Wife lifts it up while her husband's inside. Well, it hasn't been like that. No? no. OK, convince me. <sighs> All right, Mr Bolton. I'll tell you about the deal. Bobby said if he kept quiet about the burglaries, Jeff would see me right. Cash every month. I didn't like it, but Bobby insisted. And Jeff behaved himself. I mean, you fancied me, but kept his distance. And when Bobby got done again, suddenly I thought, why am I waiting for him? I wanted some attention for myself, a bit of fun what Jeff offered. Something to look forward to. Future. 
I guess it could be nasty. I just told myself he'd never get nasty with me. Until today? Yeah. Could you tell us what happened? When he got back to the restaurant, the others had gone. He was very angry. He wouldn't tell me what you said. He just drove me home. And once inside, he started shouting, saying it was all my fault. I put the business at risk. He began smashing the place up. And when I tried to stop him, he turned on me. He said I'd lied to him. He knew I hadn't told Bobby the marriage was over. You lied to Mrs. Edwards too? I was going to tell Bobby. I went to the court especially. But when I saw him, I couldn't. I just couldn't do it. Did you also lie to Barnes? No. So he started to hit me. He just hit and hit and hit. Bobby never hit you, did he? All the way home in Jeff's car, I knew what was going to happen. I was getting ready for it. That's nowhere to live, is it? Help us, Mrs. Cook. Talk to Bobby. Don't let Barnes get away with her. We've got someone to see you, Bob. What happened? You've been hurt? Nothing. Have you had it seen to? I'm fine. It was just, um, pavement. She tripped, didn't you? Where? Can't remember. Oh, when, this morning? Yeah, it was just outside the court. Well, you could sue. You know that, couldn't you, Mr. Bowen? You could sue the council or something over the... <sighs> Mr. Me, I'm talking about it. It's just a shock, you know? When you rushed off like that. I never thought I'd see you again. Not that I blame you. I mean, why should you stick around when there's plenty of other blokes, blokes like Jeff Barnes? Uh, we got the wrong end of the stick on that. Yeah? Yeah. I admit it, we were completely out of order. Sorry. They'd say the Pope was Jewish if they thought he'd get a result. He <laughs> <laughs> <You> wouldn't have. <laughs> okay, Bobby, can we just move on? You know about this. I'll cross everyone up. Barnes, everyone. Yeah. It'd be tough. There might even be money this time. But I have to know you stick by me, love. I won't let you down again. Ever. Oh, Bobby. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mrs. Cook. You didn't put a foot wrong. No, I didn't, did I? I think you did the right thing. Go and get your statement, Mr. Bowen. <laughs>